This is section 5.2. This is a nice short section about finding probabilities under the normal curve. So a normal curve is a curve that is symmetrical. It's bell-shaped. The mean is centered in the middle. Um, we have the lines approach but never touch that x-axis. Here are two examples of normal curves. Notice that the number in the middle, this one has a mean of 4, and this one has a mean of 10. So this second graph has a higher mean, a greater mean, because its mean is 10 versus 4. Um, we could also compare the standard deviation. Um, standard deviation, remember, is a measure of spread. So a graph that has a tall, skinny graph has a standard deviation that is small, whereas a graph that is spread out has a standard deviation that is large. The wider that your normal curve is, um, the larger the standard deviation is. The taller and skinnier that your graph is, the smaller the standard deviation. Um, a standard normal curve um, shows the z-scores at the bottom, the number of standard deviations away from the mean. So instead of having actual raw scores down here, we have the mean in the middle represented at 0, and then we have one standard deviation away, two standard deviations away, three standard deviations away, etc. Now, the problem with having a regular normal curve is that you can only estimate probabilities using that empirical rule for some values of x. That's the one that says that 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean, and 95% is within two, and 99.7 is within three, etc. So if I wanted to know the probability that x was between three and five, I'd be okay. But if I wanted to know the probability between 2.5 and 5.3, I'm out of luck. There's nothing I can do there um, using the empirical rule. I can only use my standard deviation numbers to calculate probabilities. The benefit of a standard normal curve, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday, is that you have a table of areas for every z value um, to reference. So if I want 0 or 1 or 2, I'm OK. But I can also use this for like 0.23 or 2.7, and it would still work. So in other words, what we're talking about here is that if I'm looking for something like this, the probability that x is between 8.2 and 12.5, so this is in the middle of these two x values, and then I know my mean is 10, um, and it looks like my standard deviation here is 2, um, I could sketch this, here's 8.2, here's 12.5, and I could shade that in. But since those are not exact standard deviations away, I can't use the empirical rule to estimate those probabilities. So I can't say 68 or 95 because I don't have those numbers on the bottom. In other words, just as it stands, I don't really have a good idea for how much of this is under that curve. Now remember, the curve does represent 100%, so I could make a guess. Well, I think it's probably more than half. Okay. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to take values like 8.2, and 12.5, and we are going to convert them into z-scores. So I will take my x is 8.2 and my x is 12.5. I'll slide in the mean of 10 and my standard deviation of 2, and I will turn those into z-scores. Um, for 8.2, when I plug that in, I'll end up with negative 9 or 0.9, and for 12.5, when I plug that in, I end up with 1.25. And the idea is that that is something I can deal with. This will actually have the same area as what I was originally looking for. I have just converted it into a z-score instead. And to get that area, I just need to use the table. So the only thing that's different today is that we are going to start with x's and convert them into z-scores before we look up the values in the table. Okay, so here's an example. A survey indicates that for each trip to the supermarket, a shopper spends 45 minutes with a standard deviation of 12 minutes in the store. The times are normally distributed and are represented by the variable x. Okay, so a shopper spends 45 minutes with a standard deviation of 12 minutes. Those are two important values, so let's write those down. We know that the mean is 45, the average amount of time, the expected amount of time, however you want to think about that, and the standard deviation is 12. 
find the probability that a customer spends less than 40 minutes in the supermarket. So 40 minutes is not a z-score. 40 minutes is a value of x that's similar to 45. So what I want to know, in order to figure out the probability that x is less than 40, the first thing I need to do is take my x equals 40 and convert it into a z-score. Now the formula for a z-score is that z equals the x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. That's on your formula sheet. It's also in your notes. So I'm going to calculate this. 40 minus 45 divided by 12. 40 minus 45 is negative 5. And negative 5 divided by 12, if I round that appropriately, I'm going to get negative 0.42. Now the other thing that I want to notice is that if I'm looking at my normal curve, 0, 1, 2, 3, there's my z-score, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Negative 0.42 is about right here. And we were interested in x being less than 40. Less than 40 means that we are looking for the area to the left. Less than means we want a left side area. So less than 40 is the same as saying less than negative 0.42. So the area that we are looking for is the area in this curve that is less than z equals negative 0.42. So if I get out my z distribution table, I'm going to look up what value I get when z equals negative 0.42. I look that up in the table, and my table tells me that I end up with 0.3372. So that's the value I get when I'm looking up 0.42 in the table. And remember, the table always tells me the areas to the left always, always, the area to the left. So if this is 0.3372 in the table, then that's the answer to my problem. That is the area that is to the left of this z value, which means it's also the area that's to the left of this x value. So the answer to my question is, what's the probability that someone spends less than 30 minutes, well, or 40 minutes, 0.3372, or if you wanted to, you could say 33.72%. That would be another way to say that. Okay. So let's do another one. Same problem, different question. A survey indicates that for each trip to the supermarket, a shopper spends 45 minutes, that's our mean, mean equals 45, with a standard deviation of 12 minutes in the store, 12, standard deviation equals 12. Find the probability that the customer spends more than 55 minutes in the supermarket. So in other words, we have x is greater than 55. Now, if you want to think where values greater than 55 would be, less than is to the left, so greater than means we're looking for an area to the right. Now, the first thing I want to do is convert this x score into a z score. So if x equals 55, z is going to equal x, 55, minus the mean, 45, divided by the standard deviation, which is 12. Again, that's that formula, z equals x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. If I look that up in my calculator, I end up with 10. 10 divided by 12 is 0.83. Okay. Now if I look at my normal curve here, I would have 0 and 1 and 2 and 3. This is z. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. 0 0.83 is about right here. And since we're looking for the area greater than x equals 55, I also want the area greater than 0.83. Or in other words, I want the area to the right. Okay. Now, when I go to look up 0.83 in my z table, okay, so I'm using my z table, and I am looking up z equals negative, or sorry, positive 0.83. I look that up in the table and I get 0.7967. Now I should know right away that this isn't my answer because when I look at this number I shaded in, this is definitely less than half. So this is not the right answer. So remember, if you are looking for the area on the right, your table always tells you the area on the left. And since the whole curve adds up to one, to find the area on the right, we need to do one minus 0.7967 or 1 minus the area on the left, will give us the area on the right, 0.2033.
and that'll be my answer. If that's the area to the right of that z value, then that is also the area to the right of that x value. And if you wanted to, you could write 20.33% for that probability. All right, next question. Find the probability that a customer spends between 33 minutes and 60 minutes in the supermarket. Okay, so again, that means that I am looking for the area in the middle. Okay, I want the middle area here. So I need to go through and convert both of these Z scores into X, sorry, both of these X scores into Z scores. Okay, so the first one, X equals 33. That would give me Z equals X, 33 minus the mean, which we know was 45 from the top of the page, divided by the standard deviation of 12. That gives me negative 12 over 12, or negative 1. So x equals 33 has a z-score of negative 1. If I check x equals 60 on the other end of this interval, I'm going to plug this in, that would be x, 60, minus the mean, 45, divided by the standard deviation of 12. That's 15 divided by 12, and 15 divided by 12 is 1.25. So I go to my curve, 0, 1, 2, 3, and this is z, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Look at my values. Here is z equals negative 1. Here is z is 1.25. And I want the area that is in between. Okay, now remember, when you're dealing with an area in the middle, um, if I look up the 1.25 in the table, that tells me the area all the way to the left. Uh, if I look up 1.25 in the table, I end up with 0.8944. So 89.44% of the curve is left. That's all the way left, but I don't really want this little part right here. If I look up negative 1 in the table, that tells me that piece right there all the way to the left. If I look up negative 1 in the table, that'd be negative 1.00 if you need help with the decimals. That is 0.1587. So the idea is that this area that I want plus the area that I know have to add up to the entire thing. Okay, I want this one. I know this one. And I also know the entire piece of graph right here. So I need to subtract my values, 0 0.8944 minus 0 0.1587. And that should give me the area that is left over. So in the middle, I would end up with 0.7357. Or another way to think about this is that 0.7357, that's the area I think is green plus 0.1587, that's this white area over on the left, that's to the left of 0.1, those add up to that whole 89.4. And that's the answer. To get the area in the middle, you subtract the two table values. If you wanted to, you could say 73.57%. All right, so let's do some examples without a picture. In a survey of U.S. men, Heights of the 20 to 29 age group were normally distributed with a mean of 69.4 inches and a standard deviation of 2.9 uh, inches. Find the probability that a randomly selected participant has a height that is less than 66 inches, more than 72 inches, or between 66 and 72. Okay, first thing I want to read through the problem is try to find my mean and standard deviation. So, in a survey of U.S. men, the heights of this age group were normally distributed, that's good, with a mean of 69.4, so there's my mean, and a standard deviation of 2.9. Okay. All right, I look at this problem, it says I need something less than 66 inches. So, 66 inches, that's going to be our X value. Over here, more than 72. That would mean x is 72, and between 66 and 72 means I would need to look up both of these values, 66 and 72. So it looks like we may be able to use our answers for part A and B to help us answer this question here. The other thing I notice is that this one says left, or sorry, less. Less than tells me that I am looking for the area to the left. Less than numbers are to the left. This one says I'm looking for more than. More than tells me that I want the area to the right. And between means I want the area in the middle. 
All right. First thing I need to do is convert my answer to an X, sorry, to a Z score. So Z equals X, 66, minus the mean, 69.4, divided by the standard deviation of 2.9. If I do that in my calculator, I end up with a value of negative 1.17 negative 1.17. And when you look that up in the table, the table value that you get is 0 0.1210. I'm going to go ahead and write that over here too. The table value for x equals 66 is 0 0.1210. Since the table always tells us the area to the left, then that is exactly what we want as our answer. The probability that something is less than 66 inches is 0 0.1210. That's my answer. And if you wanted to, you could say 12.10%. All right. To the right, so z equals x, 72, minus the mean, 69.4, divided by the standard deviation, 2.9. In my calculator, when I do this, I get 0.896 and change. I need to round that to two decimal places. So remember, the 6 is going to round this up. Um, so we're going to end up with actually 0 0.90 for our x value, 0 0.90. Now we'll look that up in the table. 0 0.90 gives me a value of 0 0.8159. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write that over here too. When I look this up in the table, I got 0 0.8159. That tells me the area to the left, but I want the area to the right on this problem. So to get the area to the right, you know they add up to 100%, so I can take 1 minus that value, and I end up with 0 0.1841. Now over here, to find the area in between, all I need to do is subtract my two table values, 0.8159 minus 0 0.1210, and this one would tell me 0 0.6949. Okay. Now if you want to, think about this another way. Okay. Here is my x equals 66, and here is x equals 72. And what this data was telling me is that there's about 1.210 on the left side, and there's about 0.1841 on the right side. So the part that's in the middle would actually be 100% minus these two tiny numbers. So you could do this as well, 0 0.1210 minus 0 0.1841. If you do that, you do end up with 0 0.6949 in the middle. So that works as well. But remember, for the middle, you're subtracting the two table values for this, not necessarily the area to the left or to the right. On your homework today, you have a worksheet. It is very similar to the notes. You're going to be going through and calculating what the probability is based on an x value. The only thing that is different today from yesterday is that you have to convert x into z first. You're still going to read the table the same. You're still going to calculate the probabilities the same. And you should be in good shape. Um, on the worksheet, if you have any questions, make sure you mark those so you can ask them tomorrow in class. Thank you.